Hey, this is Willie. I in this video where I'm gonna be going over how to put a Craftsman plow on from a 1986 Craftsman GT18. But before that, I have a quick update for you guys, and I have to apologize for the shadow on my face. It's pretty bright sun out today. Uh, we're getting towards the middle of May now, and as you can see behind me, the uh, apple trees are budding really good this year. We haven't had much frost this year, uh, especially for Northeast PA. Uh, looks like we're going to have a pretty good year for apples, and even if you look up in the yard back there, the grass is all green. There's no brown spots. It's grown pretty good. I've also been cutting the grass down the field already with the rear mower. I'll uh, put uh, videos of the rear mower in action uh, in the description from videos I've done in the past for the new subscribers that haven't seen it. But uh, just thought I'd give you guys a quick update before uh, I continue with the video. So let me get the camera turned around quick. Okay, we got a whole mess of blades. This was a failed idea. That needs to get broken up and sold for cheap, whatever we can do to get money back out of it. But break that up and sell those pieces. A whole bunch of mufflers, a whole bunch of starter covers, and gas tanks, and air filter covers, and uh, even a Model 19 hydraulic pump. Uh, quite a few push mowers to take out to the Blue Mountain Antique Gas and Steam Engine Show, which is coming up this weekend. So, uh, gotta try and fit all this into a truck. Hopefully, I don't need a trailer. We'll see. But anyway, I haven't been posting many videos because I've been so busy. Anyway, as for the plow, one thing I didn't show is uh, I use the plow to get all the rocks out of the yard, which I can show a picture on screen here. Uh, we use it to backblade all the stone out of the front yard. And then, uh, as for here, I can show you live. We uh, have all these rocks that get plowed off the bank that we push back up. This car has usually been sitting here all winter, so you can see how the rocks were piled up here from behind the car and also piled up in front of the car. So the Craftsman plow works really good for getting these rocks plowed up out of the yard. I also have a video at the, uh, I'm sorry, a demonstration at the end of the video of running the plow. So hope you enjoy. Uh, it's not too complicated. It looks worse than what it is, but I will show you a video on how everything goes together. And to help the video go a little bit faster, I'm going to use an electric ratchet. You can op use an open end. This will just make things go a little bit faster. And I have a screwdriver on hand to help line up the holes so it goes in a little bit easier. And I'm going to also lift it up and see up underneath there a little bit better. And I have a, a creeper to roll around because it's a little bit damp today. Uh, we've had some rain this morning. Uh, one part that I don't have showed in the pile is this pin right here. This is a piece of flat stock right here that is bent at a 90 to the actual mount assembly or frame assembly. With this pin in, this is a dozer blade. You pull this pin out and then it will be a, a trip blade, a spring trip blade. Uh, since I was using it just to move some rocks, I left the pin in. Uh, this pin is a little bit difficult to get in because the pivot points are a little bit worn on this, being that the plow is from like 1986. Uh, I got this plow on a parts tractor that was about dated to 96. I'm sorry, 86. I'm getting a little bit mixed up. The tractor was identical to this, just older. It had the opposed twin 18 in it. The engine had sat outside without an air filter cover and water got in it and caused the block to crack and fail. All four tires were flat. I paid $50 for the tractor and I sold the carburetor and the PTO clutch on it for more money than I had into the tractor and I got the plow off of it. So uh, I made out pretty good uh, on that. I also got these wheel weights with it too. And that's why uh, I had mentioned it was an 86 is because it does not have the uh, valve stem cutouts. The rims had come off of that tractor. I had to put tires on those rims. I repainted these rims as well. Uh, can't see that now, but uh, I like the valve stems on the inside versus the outside when you're running the wheel weights. Uh, it just looks cleaner, even though plastic's breaking up a little bit. They're not in too bad a shape for their age. Uh, I think the one on the other side has a crack on it, and then the I think I could probably just fill this up with JB Weld and make that look better, and then pressure wash them. They'd probably be pretty good. Let me take a look at the other side. Yeah, this one's got a crack right here. Uh, like I said, I could probably JB Weld it and make it look better, too, if I had to. I'm not too concerned with it. As long as they're on there and they add weight, I'm happy. 
tires are cheap, high runs from Tractor Supply. I run them about 7 PSI. Uh, I think I'll buy some Carlisle True Powers in the future, but that'll suffice for now. Uh, I've learned the hard way that you're better off spending the money and getting good, some good tires. So Let me start putting everything on. We're going to start with the hitch, and we'll go from there. Uh, actually, no, i got to start with the frame bracket so I can jack it up. So I'll start with those. I'm sorry. Continuing on. Okay, going to start with the frame brackets. So you're going to need two carriage bolts with lock washers and nuts. And that's going to be going on here. So let me get you get set up. Okay, this is our next piece. I like to use witness marks to know which size to the frame. That's going to go right in the lift assembly right here. Not sure how well you guys are going to see that. Let me see if I can't get you up a little bit closer to that. Right there. Okay. Okay, here's our next piece that's going to go on. That's going to go on the. Oops, let me move you guys back. I'm sorry. That's going to go on this deck bracket, the deck lift bracket. And this is where the two bolts line up on the outside. And to take some of the play out of it, I'm putting a washer on it with the original deck lift hairpin that was in there. This is going to be the center for the plow. It's going to be face down. And then the one on the side is going to be that hooks up to the lift. We're going to be hooking to the middle hole. Or I'm sorry, the second hole, not the bottom hole. Second hole. I'll put the pin in here. It's going to go in that hole in that lift piece there. And I got my hairpin that's going to go in right here. Oh, sorry. Let me get you up here. See, that kind of slots into the hole right there. I got to do the same on the other side. Let me get you guys positioned again. These pieces are the same for either side. 
Not a big deal if you mix them up. Seem to have some binding issues here, which I don't remember having before. Uh, am I missing something here? Aha, uh -huh, there we go. Yep, one of the bolts were binding up on the other side. There we go. I gotta put a washer on here and take the side to side play out of it. I don't have those washers on here, this hitch assembly will slide and make noise and drive me nuts. Well, anyone nuts. Uh, so. Next piece that's going to go in here is the rod that goes up to the plow. I've got to reposition you guys again for that. Okay, this is the lift rod that's going to go to the front. We have some threads here. This piece has got a thread onto it right here. This is going to adjust how high the plow sits off the ground, or how low it goes, how high or low it'll go. So you have a little bit of a threaded adjustment on that. As you go about five threads on, we're going to go in the hole all the way on the end on this one. My pin is a hair bit short, so I kind of have to stick it in in between the, the rod and the hitch because it won't make it all the way out the other end. Uh, so the results will vary a little bit on that. That's just what I got. Gotta make it work. So now we can uh, set the tractor down and get the plow on. Yeah, I do want to warn you guys when you're moving these plows, I do like to grab it by this big bar right in the middle. You do not want to grab it by these sides. And you especially don't want to stick your hand in here because this thing can drop and pinch your fingers like you wouldn't believe in there. So uh, when your hand is right here, it cannot bite you in any way. And, uh, I'll have one hand on that bar and then I'll grab the latch lever to kind of hold it off to the side and then you can walk it around. And uh, we are going to put the lift rod right here prior to putting the hitch pin in. And then that will give us some more movement to get that, that lift rod pin in before we put the actual hitch pin on. Okay, I'm going to continue on. Got my pin. Gonna hopefully be able to get it in there. Not sure if you can see me uh, pulling this plow back and forth allows me to get that pin lined up. position you guys. Okay, here's our next piece. Just a regular pin. It's going to go from the side all the way through. You may need a screwdriver to get that in, but it's usually not too, too bad. And I like to put these all the way through because sometimes they'll come undone while you're driving from all the spinning and vibration. So that's it for that. Our plow is now connected. We can now put on our angle control rods. That's going to start over here. Here's our bracket for that. And I'm going to need to go grab my ratchet because it's on the other side of the tractor. Give me a second. All 
Now on some later tractors, there will probably be an exhaust pipe in your way here and it won't fit, but earlier tractors it should fit. Uh, this is a 1990, I believe they made these to about 1994, 93-ish, I think they're making these. Okay, longer rod is going to be the angle rod, that one's going to be going on top. Right there, and then the bottom one is the pin. That's going to be going down here. And we got two hairpins that go in them. And once again, I like to put these just all the way through, because they like to come out and come loose. And there you have it. Let's see if I can't get you on sh uh, get a good shot of that. This is the foot actuated pin that unlatches the plow. Oops, this will be the lift lever back here. You can't see that, but uh, that unpins the plow, and then you can pull this to angle it, and you let off of that. And this is a five-position plow. Pretty nice. Okay, once you have everything together, uh, it would be a good idea to get yourself some flue film and lube up all your moving points, such as your rods that run across, that this actually pivots on right here and here. You want to lube this up, you want to lube your, lube your pin up, you want to lube your king pin and your rods and your latch mechanism. You want to lube that all up. Uh, as for how good fluid film is, you can actually see it still has uh, a residue on here, even after sitting over a year outside, it still has uh, a fluid, fluid film residue on it. It stays pretty nice. I haven't had any rusting issues. Uh, I just wet it down before I put it away for storage. Uh, it's usually face down out by my shed. And so uh, as soon as the rain stops, I'll get you a shot of this thing doing some work. This should be a pretty good spot to stretch the, tra uh, the plow's legs. Uh, as you can see, there's my brother's, other brother's case tractor. I have two brothers. A little confusing sometimes. Uh, the injection pump had failed on that tractor. And uh, we do have another injection pump on that, which is now a parts tractor because we have that. Sorry about the shakiness on, it's a little windy out here and I don't know how bad the wind noise is going to be, we'll see. But yeah, that's going to be a part stoner to fix that. So he was in the middle of doing this little bit of property here and leveling it out when that had stopped, but this is a pretty uneven ground. I think we can probably improve a little bit and see what we get. So let me get you guys set up and we'll move a little dirt.
I'd say that leveled out pretty good. Some of the higher spots you probably pick out the rocks and hit with a hand crank a little bit. I don't know whether you can see that up there. You get pretty good control. I'm saying there's a quite a bit of dirt here. I mean this stuff's wet so it's a little more slippery, but yeah, you can carve that dirt back quite a bit. It works. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure you give me a thumbs up. Thanks for watching. Have a good day. Bye. Got some bonus footage for you guys. I got the engine back from the shop for that. That can start going together this weekend. I've also got a new addition to the shop. Let me go over to the shed and I'll give you a look. Just thought I'd mention quick that I did fire the rear mower up. Uh, as for a project redesign, I had add to, uh, I'm sorry, I had to add a diode to the ignition wire because the Ignition was back feeding voltage to the power supply to the relays and causing them to not work correctly So just had to add a diode a one-way valve basically to uh, Solve that issue Got a new tractor here in the shop. Let me get this uh, Door opened up and we'll take a look what we got Okay, I know you guys know about that and those and that. Here's another addition. This is a 7016. It is a hydrostatic. This thing drives absolutely perfect. The engine smokes, which is kind of be typical for a Briggs. And I didn't even have to put a battery in this thing. Literally, I, uh, Drove it up to the truck, took the lift lever off and the steering wheel off to get it into the truck as well as the plow that came with it. Uh, just a manual angle plow. To fit into the underneath the cab of the 87 Dodge. Uh, locked the brake once it was in the truck. And I wheeled it off and put it back together and drove it right to here and I even drove around the property a little bit. Didn't even have to add gas to it, the oil was fine. It does smoke, it still has the original exhaust in it. As for... Uh, bad points or issues uh, someone had I'm not sure if, re if they had retrofitted this engine or if uh, this isn't the correct starter cover or maybe this is not the original block and the block was swapped out I don't know but uh, yeah this was cut out to accept the Bindex starter I, from what I've seen a lot of the pictures on these tractors had the starter generators on them not uh, Bindex starters. That being said, if you guys go back to my older videos, I have another tractor that's a twin to this, if not a brother, that has that overhead valve K361 in it that I can drop in the hood on this. I'm kind of on the fence if I want to use this for parts and part it out and get my money back out of it, and then, uh, or if I want to get this running and give it to my brother Jonathan to run instead of the other tractor and then sell the other tractor as a running shuttle drive. I might take just take the 18 horse and drop it in my Alice Chalmers in the future and I can eliminate a tractor. I got so many tractors around here nowadays with the three Craftsman's, two Simplicities, the Alice Chalmers, and now this. Uh, it's starting to get a little bit overwhelming. But uh, yeah, the fate is not... Uh, decided yet on this thing. By the way, the lights are in perfect shape on this too. <laughs> They're not blistered. So uh, those lights are hard to find. I'm surprised I've found two sets of good lights on these tractors. I guess the I got lucky. I don't know. I'll probably... I don't know. We'll figure something out. But yeah, that's a new addition to the shop. That was it. See ya. Bye.